try to pick up a few more things. I hope that's okay. I'll be out of your hair in like two minutes. years. Yep. You really not going? Nope. Mm -hmm. I think you're fucking up on this. Why? I don't care about any of those people. I mean, most of them post every second of their lives on Facebook anyway. I already know everything about them. We have nothing left to catch up on. There's no reason to reune. This is because of that girl, right? What girl? Don't talk to me like I'm weak and pussy, Josh. I know about your life. The chick with the dude's name. The one who left you for your way better looking best friend. Well, I wouldn't say way better looking. Okay, would you say incredibly better looking? I would not. Would you say ridiculously better looking? All right, now you're just being mean. What was that girl's name? Daryl? <laughs> Daryl? Who names a girl Daryl? Daryl Hannah's parents named her Daryl, and I would suck the farts out of her couch cushion. Fair point. But her name was Alex. And A, it was a lot more complicated than that. She left me for one of my best friends. B, this shit was like 15 years ago, dude. I just, I don't care about any of it. I less than don't care. Huh, okay. I just think you're missing out on a great opportunity here. To do what? To get this girl out of your head by plowing through a field, a small town, nearly 40, Highly sexually frustrated divorcees that are gonna be at this thing. Sounds exhausting. Listen, I went to my 20th last year and it was lit. You got all these broads who were way too good for you back in the days, but now the momentum has swung in your direction because they're all divorced and horny. Who was the hottest chick in your school? Aside from Daryl. I wasn't gonna say Daryl. Okay. It was probably Stacy Lias. Stacy Lias, Stacy with an I. Yeah. That's how you know she was hot. Her parents put the flying dick curse on her by placing an I at the end of her name. She probably used to dot it with little hearts and shit. She did. And she probably never even said a fucking word to you either. She didn't. I bet Stacy with an I traveled her fine ass around a little bit. She probably even has a couple of kids. Shit, she probably even got the job that she loves. A couple of years ago, she probably got the balls up to leave that bitch made excuse of a husband of hers. This is Stacy's act too, dude. She's old enough to know what she wants, and she's young enough to still get it. And you know what? What? Drinking four of those fruity frozen white lady drinks and jerking your old dusty dick off in the lunchroom is exactly what she wants. Think about it, man. You wrote that check back in 1999. It's time to cash that shit. So you got laid at your 20th, huh? No. Well, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Dude, dude, I'm telling you, it could have happened that night, man, but it was an open bar. I had way too much to drink. I passed out on the locker room toilet. Listen, I fucking woke up in the middle of the night, locked in the school. Don't give me shit on this. I'm telling you, shit was on. There was this chick that was on a volleyball team back in the day, Ivy. Fine-ass Puerto Rican. Dude, what the fuck, man? The fuck what? You can't say that. Say what? Puerto Rican? Why? That doesn't sound shitty to you? No, you fucking weirdo. It just sounds so harsh. What, Puerto Rican does? Yes, Christ. Puerto Rican. Christ, Teddy, come on. Puerto Rican? Fucking stop, dude. Dude, Puerto Rican is not racist. That's your white guilt talking. The girl's from Puerto Rico. She was Puerto Rican. Hey, Hector, come here. Let me ask you something. What's up, Teddy? Hey, is Puerto Rican racist? Oh, please stop. You mean... 
all Puerto Ricans or like just one in particular? No, 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 like the term, like Hector is Puerto Rican. Oh, no, man, because I am Puerto Rican. See? I don't know. What's up? Josh thinks Puerto Rican is racist. Oh, yeah. That's certainly something a white guy would be talking to a black dude about on lunch. I don't know. I guess my mom was kind of a racially insensitive. And uh, she used to just be yelling shit like, those goddamn Puerto Ricans got their van up on the blocks again, shit like that. I guess it was her tone. I don't know. Maybe it just changed the word for me. Huh. Maybe it is racist. Your mom just sounds like a dick. You know that shit is ridiculous, right? What's ridiculous is an otter box costs a hundred fucking dollars. What the fuck was that, man? An old friend. This guy I grew up with just called me. Did you used to fuck that dude? Because that look you had had a real, I used to put my stuff inside the other person on the end of that phone type of vibe. Maybe on some like sleepover type experimental shit or something like that. Yeah, don't sweat it, Josh. Actually, did you know that 36% of heterosexual men report same-sex experimentation in pre-adolescent years? What? A Puerto Rican dude can't be educated? I have you guys know I've got a bachelor's degree in sociology and psychology. You know what? I changed my mind. Y'all both fucking racist. It must have just been a pocket dial or something. Josh, if you don't answer that shit, I will. Hello? Josh? Hey. Paul. What's up? You... You get one of those invitations to the 23 Union? The Highland House, right? Super fancy. Josh, listen, I got, I got some bad news. I'd go if I were you. That's all I'm saying. Of course you would. You had the best time at mine. The best time. Honey, did you hit your head today? What? Do you have a recollection of your 20th high school reunion? Yeah. Okay, because if you did, then you would recall me uh, drinking a bottle of Fireball in the parking lot, calling your first girlfriend a towny cunt, and puking in the backseat of the rental car. You danced. All I'm saying is, you don't know what kind of shape you're gonna be in for your next 20th. Like, 
you might not be good. Like, you might be wheelchair-bound with a bag on your hip. Jesus, dude. You're gonna regret it. I regret telling you that I got the invitation. Wouldn't it be nice seeing some of your friends? None of my friends would go to something like this. God, it must be painful to be this cool. Like, does it hurt physically? Like a sunburn? Why don't you just load the dishwasher? Ira Glass said those detergent pods cause leukemia. And you want to live forever? I just don't want the cause line on my death certificate to include the words original scent. God damn it. Don't worry, I got it. Your hands are wet. Give me a minute. No, I got it. 845. Speaking of Middletown. Alex Perkins. Hey, Alex. Josh? Yeah. Um, hi. Hey. How's it going? So, um, how have you been? And, uh, and, and the kid. Kids, right? You have two now? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I got two girls. <laughs> two girls, wow. <laughs> My dad always said that he got stuck with all girls. It's because he didn't keep it in long enough. Wow, that's gross. I'm sorry. I don't know why I said that. Um, and um, AJ, that's that's your wife's name, right? AJ. Yeah. Um, Alex. Uh, listen. I I got some bad news. Okay. I got. Paul called me this morning. J Jesus, is he okay? Yeah, 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 he's fine. He's okay. Uh... Josh, why don't you just tell me what's going on? Uh, Andy. Andy what? Andy died? Yeah. So, uh, uh, Paul and his wife rented an Airbnb for the weekend. Um, for everyone, uh, for the service, I mean. The service? Yeah, it's uh, it's next Sunday, um, but I think we're all gonna come up for a long weekend. You should really come up, you know? Yeah, yeah, I'll see you up there. Yeah? Okay. Um. I guess Paul's just gonna text the address when he has it. Okay. Okay, so, um, so I'll see you soon then. Okay. Oh. Okay. Bye. Bye.
Jesus, Josh. Uh, this metaphor is a little on the nose. You all right? Yeah. And fight. Just couldn't stand the idea of Andy getting all the attention this weekend. Good to see it. Yeah, man. Come on, let me show you where to put your shit. All right. Sweet chance for it. <laughs> Thanks, dude. So you cut off the pot leaf patches yourself, or they just fall off on your 30th birthday? <laughs> I can't believe that it's 2019 and there's even a cell phone tower up here yet. Honey, this is God's country. What, God doesn't have to check his email once in a while? You know, speaking of hirsute Jewish carpenters, I think there's a maintenance guy outside. Hmm? Maybe a handyman? I guess there's trouble in paradise. You see what I did there? <laughs> Maybe ask about the Wi-Fi sitch? Dude, you're still driving that truck. Oh, yeah. What about the AC? Does it still blow that smell like dead people? Oh yeah, never did figure that out. So, um, on my way up here, I saw this like 400 pound guy mowing a lawn wearing nothing but a Bigfoot monster truck tank top and a pair of bikini briefs. I thought of you. Where? Yeah, I just uh, ran over this Cocker Spaniel puppy a couple miles back down the road. Looked in my rear view to make sure it was dead. I see this little girl standing over it, probably 10 years old. Must have been its owner, just inconsolably wailing. Made me think of you. Oh my God. It's okay, it's her thing. Oh, hey buddy. Hey buddy. It's okay, it's her thing. Oh my God, how are you? Oh, it's too complicated an answer than I have in me right now. You? Same. Listen, jealous isn't the word, but I would... You have not aged a day. I'm sorry, hey. sweetie, uh, this is my husband, Kyle. Kyle, this is my, Josh. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you. Uh, how was your ride in? Oh, short. Actually, I live like 40 minutes from here, so. Bet he has Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi? Oh, God, no. No, my place is, um, what is that word? Uninhabitable? Like if uh, Intervention and Hoarders had a scabby baby that smelled like dirty laundry. Yeah, that's my place. This, though. Stop. Stop right there, man. This is the least I could do to get us all under one roof. So, you came alone? Where's the fam hiding? Oh, uh, you know, they couldn't make it out, so. Next time. Next time. Wow, well, where's Kara? I haven't seen her since we did that. Polly, I'm going down to the dock to stretch. Oh, okay. These are my friends I was telling you about, uh, Josh. Hey. Uh, Alex. Hi. And uh, Kyle. <clears throat> I'm Kyle. Kyle, uh, Alex's husband. Cool. 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 Super sorry about you guys' as friend. Thanks. So, I'm gonna go down to the doctor's stretch. Don't fall in down there. Water's getting pretty cold. That's how skinny people die. Um, okay. Kara had to work in Jersey this week. She couldn't make it. So you traded her in for a newer model, less miles? Ha uh ha -huh, ha, uh, very funny. It's not like that. She's my assistant. Well, my protege, really. Very professional, and she's a damn good chef. You? You used to be a damn good liar. Yeah, dude, dude, she's like my little sister. Yeah, like a, like a sexy little sister. 
Well, that was concerning. Listen, you guys go do something. I'm gonna get dinner ready in a few. Shit, Jeff Ball is gonna cook for us. Oh shit, before you get all crazy though, I just, I just wanna put it out there. I'm not into eating pickled dick. Yeah, I'm just saying. It would be my honor, and don't knock it until you try it. Yeah, I'm serious. The rest of you can eat that shit. I'll fucking go to Taco Bell or whatever. No exotic cheeses, no sweetbreads, I promise. Good, can't have any sweetbreads anyway. My sugar's been high the last couple years. I mean, getting old is bullshit. Just go somewhere for 90 minutes. I got this. Wanna go for a walk? Sure. I mean, I guess Lyme disease isn't the death sentence it once was. So, I guess I'm upstairs, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, top of the stairs, on the right. Okay. Josh. Yo. It's, uh, it's good to see you, man. I'm glad you made it. Wouldn't miss it, man. back here? Not yet. It'll be weird if we go into town. It'll be weird being with the guys again. It'll be weird with Andy not here. Yeah. How are you doing with that? That's the first time you've even said his name since the other night. Um. I don't really know. I don't really know how I'm feeling right now. It's like, I know it's coming. I know a storm is coming and I can't do anything to stop it, but this is like the quiet before it gets here, you know? Yeah. Uh, it'll happen though. It'll sink in at some point, I know that. You know, when you need to talk. Yeah, I know. So that uh, reunion was a little intense. What are you talking about? Back there with the guys, it was something. Oh, um, yeah. It's complicated. It's always been complicated. Look, I don't want to be that guy, and I know this really isn't the right place for this, but do I have anything to worry about? Bears, spiders, koi dogs, <laughs> ignorant rednecks who don't like big city boys and purple polo shirts. So good. Thank you. Thank you. No, seriously, like, this is so good that I feel like I need to get some sort of bad news to even out the universe. Like, the minute I put my fork down, my doctor's going to call me and tell me that I have terminal rectal cancer. Jesus. It's that good. I gotta say, that's the first time anyone's mentioned anal cancer in a positive review, but I'll take it. I mean it. I'm sorry. It is amazing. You don't like it? No, no, I just uh, have a flutin intolerance, so I'll just I'll pick around it. It's cool. I gotta ask you, how much does this, this right here run me if I went to your restaurant? Oh, I, um, I don't. $138. Fuck you. 
Really? Yeah. About that. With the appetizer and the aperitif. About 138 a piece. 140. So if I took my family to your restaurant, you're saying that just me, my wife, my two daughters, we all got exactly this. It would be almost $600. You mean like if you found yourself all the way in Chicago, the CeCe's Pizza Buffet had a full dining room, the legal drinking age was lowered to 10, and you got stuck with your second choice of dining establishments, Passion de Chibot, then yeah, it'd be about that. Excluding tax and gratuity, of course. Of course. That is an incredibly mm. precise number. It's my job to know our profit margins and overhead. I'm incredibly good at it. I swear, the greatest thing I did in my career was bring her on. And then she runs the whole show. And uh, I, I want you to get a hold of uh, Eli when we get back. I want to take a look at the margin. Yeah. You have service up here? Anyway, thank you for all of this. Are you kidding? Of course. It's the least I could do, and, and this is day one. This is just the beginning. There is a culinary wonder awaiting the weekend. That is so great. So are we just gonna pretend that we're here to hang out? What we got here, what? 6.30, 7, right? Yeah. Last night. It's like 6.30, 7 o'clock. You know, I'm sitting on the porch after we ate. Got my drink, my cigar, you know, and I'm thinking about you guys coming up. We're gonna be up at the lake, some great food, a couple of cases of really good wine, and then, you know, I could feel this low frequency pain right in the middle of my chest. And I start to think about that, and this wave just crashes over me, and I get stuck in that moment, and then. You know, I, I start thinking about him and, and regrets and, you know, all the shit that I'm sure you guys are feeling. You know, but, but, but then I just stopped. I, I just stopped. And then I went back, focusing on seeing your guys' faces, you know, and, and, and my Aramac and the smell of the pines, you know, and, and, and the, the water just resides back to that dull pain, you know, that we all feel right now. And I mean, I, I'm sure that it, it's going to crash again for me, and it's probably going to for you guys too, I, I assume. And, and we came to fuck all about it. You know, time will will sand away some of the rough edges, but it'll bring us full circle right back around to, to that dull pain. But you know, I mean, we're, we're gonna be sad the rest of our lives, right? We may never get over this. You, you, you think maybe we could just push it back for a bit, you know, sandbag it for a while? You know, we'll talk about it tomorrow or even the day after tomorrow. You know, I, I'd rather just uh, be in the moment and enjoy our company, you know, with people that I, I haven't seen fuck knows how long, you know, and let's just get fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, okay.
Jesus, Teddy. Hey, man. Don't say a word. Just give me a signal. Did you get it in with Jack's girlfriend last night? What? Did you get it in? Did you clap cheeks? Break bread? Dude. Josh, did you engage in sexual congress with your lady friend? Blink once for yes, twice for no, three times if it's happening right now. Dude, you're on fucking speakerphone on video chat. Picks or it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Picks. Or it didn't happen. This is why you're calling me so early? No, Dick. I was calling to see how you were coping with the loss of a close friend. I just thought it wouldn't be terrible if I saw a titty or two. You don't have to be so reductive. Sorry. So what happened? You drank too much last night? Yeah. So how'd it go? How's everyone dealing? I don't know. It was... Kind of weird, actually, you know, I just, uh, I guess we just decided that we're not going to be sad about it yet. Like, we're just going to put it off for a day or two. Put off? Yeah, grieving. Your people are a mystery to me. I don't know, it seemed to make sense last night. You still planning on blowing up the funeral? <sighs> not something y'all discussed last night, huh? Well, no. But yeah, I, I think so. I don't know. I know this is totally out of character for you, but it's not a bad time to start doing the right thing, bro. Why start now? Uh, listen, I'll talk to you later, man. All right, later. Oh, listen, Josh. Yeah. I wouldn't be mad if you accidentally pocket dialed me while you were blowing the back out of that chick from the sticks. I'm just saying. I know you wouldn't. Hey. Hey. What you working on? This fucking thing. Steampunk dildo garden. Yeah, I tried to figure this out for like an hour this morning. <laughs> Fuck that thing. Did you clean up in here? Yeah. Couldn't sleep anymore. It's too quiet up here. Oh, city mouse, how soon we forget. Oh my god, like seriously, is this a pressure valve or what? It's like, it's not even fucking connected to anything. Hey. Wasn't there a little snack shack down at the public beach? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we went there the morning after prom, right? We did. Uh, we were up all night, and then... <gasps> and that blind lady walked into that single bathroom right after you shit in there. Oh, my God, do you remember that? That's what you remember from prom night. It had to be the worst day of her life. I mean, assuming that she was born blind, obviously. That would... Hey, hey, uh, do you think they still have coffee down there? Yeah. Yeah, fuck this thing. Um, you wanna wait for Kyle? No. Babe. Babe. Well, shit. Oh. oh. I honestly don't think I can make it any farther than this. We're what, like three miles from the town, two miles from the house? This hangover is telling me to just lay over and fucking die. Oh. oh, thank Christ. 
Ugh. I didn't peg you for a day drunk. Really? I'm a motherfucking Hall of Fame day drunk. You should be asking for an autograph, son. So, uh, what do you want to do? So Kyle, huh? Kyle. Sexy Kyle. Oh. <laughs> what? It's just a nickname that my girlfriends and I have for him. It just seems a little obvious. Well, so. <laughs> that's sweet of you to say, but it's just kind of, it's called semantic satiation. It's a word that can't hold on to its meaning because it's said so many times. I know what semantic satiation means. Thanks, Alex. I mean, I know you went to college and shit, but. Okay. <sighs> shit, I'm, you know what, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean. <laughs> Cute. Sweet of you to say. Go on. So, um, my friends just kind of started calling him that when we started hooking up and it just stuck. Now it's just kind of his name. It's pretty funny sometimes because I'll be like super pissed at him and I'll call one of the girls and I'll be like, motherfucking sexy Kyle. So when did that whole thing happen? Us, you mean? Kyle and I? Yeah. Oh, the exact start has always been a bit of a debate between us. Um, I graduated in 04 and I was still living with Anne. I met Kyle in 07 when I got back from Philly and uh, we just kind of started hooking up. So that's what he considers the beginning of the relationship, which is kind of what I let him do. What does that mean? He didn't fully grasp the, uh, how casual our arrangement was okay, at the so time. You were, you were... Whoring around the greater New York metropolitan area. Yeah. I was gonna say keeping your options open, but. <laughs> Look, dude, I was in back-to-back -back long-term relationships straight through my prime dick wrangling years. You know, I've heard. It just, I found myself in Greenpoint at 22. I didn't want another fucking boyfriend. I just, I wanted to fuck the guy who, you know, made toilet wine in his studio apartment or, you know, the the guy with the interesting mustache and the stupid wool hat. I wasn't in the market for... Sexy Kyle? Sexy Kyle. <laughs> so we met at a rock bar downtown and then we went back to his apartment on the Lower East Side and hooked up. Ooh, she's a lady. She's goal-oriented. <laughs> So he lived in this apartment above this sex shop, Babes in Toyland or something stupid like that. But it was so exciting. I, you know, I assumed it said something about him. I had this fantasy that he would take me downstairs and tell me to get anything I wanted and then tell the store clerk to put it on his account and he'd be like, oh yes sir, very good sir. <laughs> so you thought you landed the Arthur Bach of rubber dicks. Oh, I wanted so badly to believe. But, you know, I thought it was this, this one-time hookup. But then he kept calling and calling, and then eventually he sort of wore me down. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that first night is what he considers the start of our relationship, and I consider it to be about a year later when he saw me in my period panties. Ooh, a year? Well, you can run through a lot of early century hipsters in a year. I was a plague upon that burrow. So, um, what about you? How's family life? Split up about a year ago. Fuck you, really? Yeah. I'm so I'm sorry. Shit, Josh, I'm sorry. Thanks. 
I guess. I don't know. Like, I never know what to say when people tell me that. It's like she died or something. So, what happened? Oh, no, you know, I'm shit. I, that just came out. You don't, you don't have to answer. No, that's cool. AJ and I are two very different people. I mean, I guess I always knew it. I thought it was a good thing that we were different. You know, we kind of filled in each other's gaps. But as it turns out, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. So, just come home on a Monday and she's distant. And you come home Tuesday, she's more distant. And Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, the distance just grows. And by Saturday, she says she needs a break. And then you're moving her and your girls into her fucking sister's third floor apartment on Sunday. <sighs> on TV, they call it a trial separation. Like Paul Reiser and Helen Hunt mad about you. It's like supposed to be this break to reappreciate each other. Maybe come back together later in a montage set to our wedding song. It's fucking bullshit. See where we're at during Christmas. And then it goes by. And so does New Year's. Valentine's Day. Fucking Easter. And it's the end of August and you can't get more than a formal greeting out of her when she's dropping the girls off for the weekend. Like I'm a fucking bank teller cashing in a rolled up change. And then you kind of just realize that it's over. And it sucks. That's not what we're here for, though. Shitty. Josh, I'm sorry that you had to go through it. Well, don't worry about it, because it's not happening again. Ever. Fucking done, man. Circus has left town. I mean, I'm sure at some point I'm going to need to tend to my physical needs and whatnot. Probably just starting a steady diet of physically disabled widows, weathered old bar skanks, relationships, so fuck that. I am done. Old tattooed horse. With chicken necks. <laughs> Who's still dressed like it's 1981. Fuck yeah. Big hair, brightly colored suede boots. Oh, like wrestlers. Exactly <laughs> like wrestlers. Like fucking golden era, early 90s wrestlers. <laughs> Marty Jannetty. I'm going to be fucking Marty Jannetty. <laughs> My 13-year-old self would be so jealous. <laughs> so how are you doing? With all this. I don't even know where to... Hey, um... When do you say that we stick to the plan and uh, pretend nothing bad is happening today? You guys are. Thought you guys were on a way together. We went to Sherman's to try and find coffee. It's closed. Closed? Wait, closed, closed? Closed, closed. My childhood is disintegrating around me. There's coffee in the house. I'm good, thanks. Is that beer? Are you guys drinking? It. Is everyone drinking? Oh, you people are animals. Don't worry, Al. We got a few days to get them there. 
Better pick up some peach schnapps if you're gonna run into town. Hey, buddy. Mm. You uh, had a little too much to drink last night. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Rusty, sorry. Yeah, not throwing a lot of shoes in Chicago, huh? Not on the professional circuit, no. So listen, I know Tori was joking about you guys running away together, but I'd be lying if thought didn't cross my mind. What? No, no, why? Uh, I don't know, man. You guys got a little unfinished business. You're both in town mourning the loss of a friend. A friend who broke you guys up nonetheless. A lot of crazy shit going on here. You know what I like, and time's a crazy shit, right? Pussy. Opiates. Oh. And pussy. Yeah, well, I'm not you. You are. Yeah, my fucking dick wouldn't work right now if I wanted it to. Problem is, you do not believe in yourself. So what's everybody want to do tonight? Al? I don't know. I was thinking maybe we could hang out here tonight. Quiet dinner, early night. Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. Oh, thank Jesus. Hey, I noticed coming in yesterday that Nelson's was still open. Cool. Yeah. Wait, Nelson's is a bar? You still drinking 7 and 7? On special occasions, you know. Will you be drinking this free 7 and 7? Please. <laughs> Whew, they're not fucking around in here. <clears throat> Strong? Did you try yours yet? Oh my god. <laughs> What's going on? Just uh, appreciating Nelson's commitment to fucking us up. Just a little strong. Really? Tor. Mm -hmm. Try that yet? It's fine. Fine. It's fine. That is a glass of booze. Paul, I've been going to Burning Man since I was 15. Fucking old people. Are we old people? Yeah, definitely. Well then, once more, on to the breach, dear friends. You like playing darts. That's just your small town talking. You want to play darts with me? I do. Don't worry, I speak small town fluently. If Norman Rockwell had a cousin Cooter, this would be his painting. This is a Cooter Rockwell painting. But you can't remember the first time we came in here. I bet. Fine. It's just a bad bet, that's all I'm saying. Sure you want to take it? I'm feeling confident. Well, it was fall 99, no, I'm sorry, 98. Dave Krause's older brother Tommy was the bouncer that night and he just did us a solid and let us in. He knew we were under 21. <laughs> and he laughed at you and you told him you were 28. <laughs> Every other kid in this town told him they were 21. I stand by that strategy. Besides, I probably could have passed for 28. You remember that mustache? Uh, I still have nightmares about that thing. And besides, don't be smirch the good name of mustaches. That was four wimpy lip hairs and a little hope, my friend. You used to tell me how much you liked it. Well, years of therapy has taught me that uh, I am what's referred to in the medical community as a people pleaser. Okay. Well, first off, ouch. I'm sorry. And I have a very clear memory of that night. I got way too drunk until I puked in that booth and I passed out and you let me sleep in it. Sounds like me. Hall of Fame girlfriend. <laughs> 
Yeah. Kyle has similar stories. And you are half right. You did embarrass yourself that night, but that was not the first night we were in here. No. Bullshit. <laughs> it was August 98. Tommy was the bouncer that night, but uh, there were three of us. You, Andy, and I. Really? Yep. Three intrepid explorers taking their first steps into the wide world of alcoholism together. Was that really 20 years ago? Doesn't even make sense, does it? You know, when I was a kid, I thought like 38-year-old men were grown-ups. Fucking Tom Brokaw. Joan Van Ark. <laughs> Holy fucking shit. Josh Donovan. Is that Josh Donovan? Larman? Shit, Holy yeah, man. shit. Holy shit. Donovan, Alex Randall. Hey, Scoop. Wow, I haven't seen you guys in... Gotta be 20 years. Yeah, 20 years. Holy shit. Holy shit, 20 years is right. God damn, so what, what have you been up to? Um, I got my BA in photography and now I am shooting for a pretty popular food magazine in the city. Steam Fitters Union, Local 21. Cool. Nice gig. Nice. Sweet job, Thank you. man. Thank you. So you two aren't... <laughs> no. No, no. Uh, I am married to um, that guy over there. Huh. So, uh, what are you guys up to? I mean, what have you been doing for the last 20 years? Holy shit, dude. Yep, I'm a business owner. Congratulations, Scoop. I just couldn't imagine working for anybody else, you know? Yeah, more like he couldn't work for anybody that wouldn't let him crush butt heavies on the job. Shut up, Lerman. Hey, Paul. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and his wife? No, no, they work together. He gets to work with her and I get this. Hey, I know, I know you're joking, but it hurts. Scoop. Hey, Lerman. This is, uh, my friend, Tori. Enchanté. Fucking moron. Hi, I'm Scoop. It's nice to meet you. Your parents named you Scoop? Uh, well, my name's actually Eugene, but in middle school, I actually... Bonsoir, monsieur. Ça va? So, what are you guys up to? What are you going to be doing before the party on Saturday? Because, you know, Larman and I were figuring on coming down here beforehand. Free game. Hell yeah. So you guys interested? You want to come down? Actually, we're all in town for uh, Andy's funeral. Andy? A Andy who? A Andy, your Andy? Andy Cooper? Get the fuck out of here. What, what happened? Uh, I'm sorry. No, no, it's cool. He, uh, he... he died suddenly at home. That's what they always say on the news, right? He died suddenly at home. He killed himself. Suddenly, at home. Jesus, you guys okay? They're staying drunk to avoid it until the wake, which seems like a fundamentally awful idea, but you know, say la vie, right? Marry me. I, I don't know, I guess you guys wanna get fucked up? Yeah. We really do. Bar Cape. Six beers and six shots of your finest sour mash. Yeah, wait your fucking turn, Emma. Okay, fine. That's cool. Whenever you get a chance.
me. Relax, man. Hey, man, take it easy. I'm just trying to help you to bed. I don't need your fucking help. Okay, okay. They're just trying to help you, Kyle. Alex, I appreciate that. But I'm fine. I'm completely fine. Really. Okay. I'm going to bed. Not far behind you. Thank you all for a fine evening. Good night. Good night. Alex. Kyle. Oh! oh. I'm fine. Fine. Hey, uh, we're gonna... I'm gonna go to bed. Oh, uh, what's the breakfast situation? Crunch berries in the top cabinet? Uh, I don't know about the milk situation, though. Night. Drinks? Music. Putting on my favorite old hoodie for the first time in the fall. Paul. I don't think it's crazy girl shit to ask what the fuck we are. Never said you were crazy. It's your tone of voice. I never said you were crazy. 
fuck you! You bring me up here with your high school buddies to go to your dead friend's funeral in this fucking house and I'm what? I'm supposed to be okay with you treating me like a work buddy? Like I'm some fawning goddamn underling to the great Paul fucking Mancini. Why am I here? Because I need you to be here. You gotta think I'm such an idiot. I don't think you're an idiot and I never said Shut you were crazy. Shut the fuck up! You think I need this? I'm 23 years old. I graduated at the top of my class. I could have gone anywhere. Anywhere, Paul. Why am I here in the middle of whatever this is? You know, I never thought you'd leave her. I knew it. Going in, I just thought, fuck it, you know? Sure, I felt like shit for being the other woman, but you're an adult. And if it was your adult decision to go have some fun with me, then I'm cool with it. But months and months, man. One morning, I realized nothing hurt more than knowing you were going home to her. Pretending I don't even fucking exist. That I'm not still home, smelling you on my sheets while you're with her, pretending to be the world's greatest husband. I never asked you to blow her off for me. I never asked you to take me out in public or spend time with me on holidays. I never asked you for anything. But now I'm asking, what am I to you? You know, Tor, not for nothing, this is not the best time for me to be having this conversation. Yeah, those few hours of sobriety during the day can be tough. You're a bad person. You're all bad people and I'm not. Not anymore. I fucking refuse to be the shiny red convertible in your bullshit midlife crisis. I'm going home. I fucking quit. Good morning. Eat a dick. Uh-huh. Hey, morning. Yeah, morning. You good? Yeah, I'm fine. Why? More importantly, how are you doing? What do you mean? Uh, you and Alex, you guys catch up? Oh yeah, yeah, we stayed up and talked all night, man. That's it? Just talking? Yeah, man, why? Uh, I don't know, you're on the couch all night with the love of your life, just talking. Oh, no. If I was making a fuck stew, those would be the ingredients. A jambalaya of sex. Jambalaya. Dude, no. Don't you lie to me. I'm not. I could smell sex in the air, like a shark, like a sex shark. Your secret's safe for me. Always. Yeah. So what about you? What about me? What's going on with you and Tori? Nothing. Oh, nothing. Yeah. What the fuck was that just now? Oh, hey, here comes your girlfriend. Let's have this conversation later. Finish what conversation? Nothing. So, we're keeping secrets now? That's new. I don't know, are we? You first. I fuck you two. Mm, okay, fine. <laughs> this is so fucked up. I just don't want you guys to think any different of me. Okay, I just, I just don't want you guys to judge me. And I know you're not gonna believe me, and I wouldn't tell anybody this, but I'm fucking Tori, or I was fucking Tori. What? I know, I'm an idiot. So, so um, what's up with Kara? Does she know? Oh, what kind of question is that? Fuck no. And I don't know if I feel worse for cheating on Kara, or because I think Tori just broke up on me. So, why? Why, why, why am I fucking my super brilliant, smoking hot, 23-year-old assistant behind my spiteful withholding wife's back? Or why am I upset? Yeah. Because some of us have to be pieces of shit so that the rest of the world can know they are not. I should take this. Yeah. Paul, Paul. Did you tell him about last night? What? No. He said some of us. 
He said some of us indicating that he and us have that in common. I think he just meant us as in humans. The human us. Why? Why would he say that? Why would anyone ever say that? Alex, you're freaking out. Did he hear us? Were we loud? No. Was I loud? Sometimes when I'm drunk, I get expressive. No, you weren't loud. You were fine. Nobody heard us. You're freaking out. A little bit. Yeah. Freaking out a little bit. I fucked my old boyfriend on the couch while my husband was passed out drunk 30 feet away. Freaking out a little bit! You, uh... You want to talk about it? Is that what people do? I mean, how am I supposed to know? Oh, like I'm some professional adulteress? Oh, yeah, no. You know what? Hold on a second. Let me just uh, consult the field guide that I keep in my bag for proper protocol. Sorry. We, we should probably do that. We should probably talk. We should probably talk. So how does this work? You want to go first? I'm having a little trouble articulating my thoughts right now. Can you go first? Okay. Last night was... Oh shit, I'm, I'm sorry. We'll finish this later. I promise. Great. Really looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Just... Text us over the address. We'll be there in like an hour or so. Okay. Bye, Chris. That was Andy's sister, Kristen. She's over at Andy's place going through his stuff, looking for something for him to wear. And she wants us to come and help? Yes. Right. So I'm sorry. I told her we were coming in town for the service, and if she needed anything just to reach out, I just didn't think that no, she was... No, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Hey. Hey, Chris. I'm so sorry. Yeah, well, thanks. Come in. That's where he was when she found him. I, uh, I had to take the couch out of here. We knew he wasn't all right for a long time. Started to get distant. Skipped a couple of holidays at our house. Just said it was work. Andrew asked me to feed his cat when he was away for a long weekend. And I'm in his bathroom. And there are like a hundred empty pill bottles on his toilet tank. I'm thinking he must never throw anything away. Like he'd just been piling these empty containers here like a slob. He was such a slob. So, how are you guys? It still seems so weird to think of y'all as grown-ups. Paul, you're still out in, um... Yeah, Chicago. Yeah, I own a restaurant out there and I just had a baby a couple months ago. Chicago? I love Chicago. The city by the bay. City of Angels. Town's so nice they named it twice. Yeah, it's great. You, uh, you ever been to the, uh, Sears Tower? Uh, no. No. That's crazy! Man, alive! If I lived in Chicago, I'd be at the Sears Tower, like, every single day. You know, it's the world's largest man-made structure. I did not know that, no. So you're a cook, huh? Uh, chef. Yeah. That's got to be exciting. It's all hot dogs and sausages out there, am I right? Like sausages, 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 sausages. It's an Italian restaurant. I own a little Italian joint. We love Italian. We love Italian. So, uh, so what's up with that uh, deep dish? 
The pizza? Yeah, I mean, as a professional, like, do you really consider it a pizza? Or based on its, its thickness and its consistency, do, do you look at it as a casserole? Because I think, uh, I'm thinking casserole. Um, how about you, Josh? Everything good? <clears throat> yeah, um, I, I work construction, like 45 minutes from here. A steam fitter in the steam fitters union out there. A couple of daughters. And, uh, everyone needs uh, honest work, am I right? That's right. Right. Well, that's uh, really great. I think that's something that, uh, that Andrew missed out on. Wife, kids, stable job. He'd be really happy to hear how well you guys are doing. I married a monster, and my restaurant is now serving an all-you-can-eat lunch buffet to keep the lights on. Oh, and I'm banging my 23-year-old sous chef, who I think just broke up with me. <clears throat> I'm, a, I'm an alcoholic. My wife left me. She took the kids to live with her idiot sister. I cheated on my husband with Josh last night on a couch. On a blue corduroy couch. Of course you did. I fucking called it. All this talk of food's making me hungry. Let's say we uh, catch a break, Chris, and uh, maybe get some cocktails. Yeah, all right. Uh, you guys gonna be okay here? Okay. Uh, now, here, uh, just throw it in the mailbox when you're done and leave the clothes on the dining room table. Okay. Okay, well, thank you for doing this. Thank you for letting us do this. I'll see you tomorrow at the service. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice meeting you. Thanks. Sorry about. No, it's okay. I'm sure I had it coming. I fucking knew it. That's all I'm saying.
torn between my need to pee and my desire to keep breathing. <sighs> Fuck it. I got nothing left to lose. So, so what's the move here, buddy? Fuck. I don't know. I don't know what she wants from me. Safe fence and apology. Fuck that noise. She knew what she was getting into with me. She's just a response for the shitstorm as I am. I'm gonna fuck what she wants. Wow. So why are we sitting in the car? <sighs> I'm confused. Dude, tell her that. It's not what she wants to hear from me. That's all she wants. What do you know about him? I don't know. See, I'm super good at fixing other people's problems, but my own, not so much. You think we're shitty people? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Alex. Thank you. You look like a fucking idiot when you do this. When did you become a girl? 2 Mancini the widely considered a brash neophyte by the culinary elite Proves that he has the dishes to back his rock star persona. His tagliata clearly puts the Chicago staple Coco Pazzo under the table. And although this reviewer usually avoids cliches like day old tuna tataka, I must bashfully admit that the chef's pepper della mimo was a true revelation. That was my first reveal. I know. I was what, 22, 23 years old? I never even thought about it, about cooking. It just came to me, it made sense. So I didn't have to, you know? Are you trying to make me feel bad for you because you're talented? No, Tori. Saying food came easy to me, so I did it. I found the path of least resistance and made it my life. The same thing with Kara. She never made me work for it. I didn't have to put the time in. So it just happened. It all just kind of happened. And I don't think I have any control over any of it. I'm almost 40 years old, and I might just now be coming to the realization 
that I have a baby, a wife, a house, and a business to run, and I never asked for any of it. I don't want to have this conversation right now. And if I really think about it, I don't think I've ever not taken the easy way out. I don't think I've ever found something I really wanted that I was willing to put the work in for. Until we started fuck. Until we got together. This might actually be the first time in my life I'm doing something I want. Good. I'm a piece of shit, I know. Good. But please, you gotta believe me, I never wanted you to feel like this. I'm not that big of a piece of shit. I know. You know, I don't come out clean in all of this either. Fucking a married man wasn't really on my post-grad five-year plan. I've got to take responsibility for that. I don't know what to say. You already said it, man. Just stay one more night for the service tomorrow. Please, I'll stay on the couch, whatever. I need you here. Sandbag it, right? Right. Idiot. Sorry. Hey. Hey. So, uh, did he get past her or did he just drive away? Oh, I think they're down there talking right now. Really? Really? <laughs> wow. So, uh, crazy weekend, huh? Crazy weekend. You leave him? Well, can't really afford to take up the payments on the place, so I figure I probably should. Um, can we talk? Sure. About what? Josh. just wanted to it's important for me to say that I don't regret last night oh yeah and, and I know what I'm supposed to I'm not, I know I'm supposed to be racked with guilt about it but I'm, I'm not not really well, Kyle and I aren't right together. We haven't been, and we never were. And that doesn't make it okay, but it just felt right. I mean, last night just felt so right. I, I forgot how much I missed you. And I don't know what that means, you know? I don't know what the, that means for us, and I, I don't know what that means for us. Maybe it's the end of something. Maybe it's the beginning of something. I don't know, Josh, but... I'm kind of okay with that right now. This is where you say something.
You're fucked up, Alex. Excuse me? You are fucked up. You are so fucked up. Wow. You don't feel bad? Are you fucking serious? I, I don't understand. What, do you, do you want me to feel bad? Do you feel bad? Yes. Both, yes. This is not how I was expecting you to react. Am I supposed to be happy for you? Like, way to get out there and fuck me behind your husband's back the first chance you got. Fucking stellar job, Alex. I'm not fuck you. Fuck you for saying that. You don't even know him, Josh. So let's dial back the dramatics. Okay? I, I don't, I don't. I, I was him. In case you don't remember, you fucked me over too. At least in our case, you had the decency to keep it in the family, you know, but. That was a long time ago. Yeah, and I never got over it. I never got over it. Neither did Andy. Neither will Kyle. You don't think I know that? You think that that hasn't been running through my head all night, all these years, when I, when I heard about him? You have no idea how hard it was being the only girl. You have no idea what that did to me all those years. Do you have any idea what it's like growing up with a crush on literally all of your friends? No. No. In the summer before middle school, you and I were shooting hoops in your backyard and uh, the ice cream truck came and you bought me a bomb pop with the change from your Simpsons fanny pack. Do you remember that? Hmm. No, of course you don't. I do. The wrapper is in a shoebox in my mom's attic. So was a label off one of the Zimas that Andy swiped for me from Kristen before the ninth grade Halloween dance and a puka shell necklace that I stole from Paul's room when he was going through his young Morrison phase. I have all of that. It was hard, Josh. It was really hard. I was confused. I, I've always been, clearly. And it, it doesn't make it right. It doesn't make me right, but it's the truth. It's my truth. And you know, as sad as it sounds, maybe uh, I never really figured any of it out. But I never meant to hurt you. And I never meant to hurt Andy or to break us all up. I, I have been living with that for all of these years and now Kyle. I'm sorry, this is the first time I've, I've, I've really said any of this out loud. You can't feel responsible for all that <laughs> shit. I mean, none of us should have let things end the way we did. We're just stupid fucking kids. It's <laughs> sweet know? of you to say, Josh, but come on. <sighs> so, um, you gonna tell him? I don't know. You know, last night I decided that I, that I wasn't going to, but now I don't know. It's not that I don't love him. It's just, it's time for me to take some responsibility, I guess. <laughs> Jesus. This isn't where I thought I would be at this age. Me neither. I'm so sorry. I'm I'm sorry too. I really I shouldn't have said all that. I shouldn't no, have don't. Said all that. Okay. <laughs> wow.
Crazy weekend, huh? <laughs> Crazy weekend. <laughs> Where does this leave us? We're gonna be friends. Yeah. Yeah, sure, you know. Talk on the phone a few times a month. Maybe I'll come down and visit after Christmas. You can come up next spring, help me clean out my shithole apartment, meet my kids. We can do that. And, uh, and everything's going to be okay, right? Everything's going to be okay as long as this weekend keeps going. Right. I don't know, and it'll all work itself out with Kyle. And, uh, and we'll come up here every year. <laughs> Do this again, it'll be our little thing, right? <laughs> Fuck yeah, it will. Yeah, sure will. So, um, tonight we just get fucked up? Why not? You know, Andy stayed with me in ninth grade for like six months. His mom and dad were split, and so his house was a war zone. So my parents kind of took him in for the rest of the school year. That was nice of them. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. I wasn't even allowed to have sleepovers in high school after my mom walked in on me and my best friend making out one night. Yeah, it was a bit of an adjustment. I mean, one day I'm an older kid, the next day I got a brother the same age and we're sharing the same space. Everything smelled like balls. Direct correlation to the mountains of hardened athletic socks that stood on their own throughout the room. Bonehenge. Ew, man. What do you expect? Two 15-year-old boys living in the same 150-square-foot area. It was a hot zone. Wasn't always just the socks, though, was it, Paul? Shit. You did something gross. Well, Andy liked this shirt that I had, some punk band or yeah, something. Yeah, I'm gonna stop you right there, Ricky Rackman. It was a Black Sonic Youth t-shirt with the cover of the Goo album on it, which really pays off in a minute. <laughs> Go ahead. All right, so Andy was always really jealous of Paulie's t-shirt collection. His parents would take him to all these too cool for school kind of vinyl shops, you know, and he'd buy up all the shirts for all these really obscure little bands. Since when was Sonic Youth an obscure band? Obscure for a bunch of small town kids. I mean, what, Middletown didn't get the internet, what, three years ago? Thing was, though, this guy has no idea who any of the bands on his shirts were. Bullshit. Yeah? Name one member of Sonic Youth. I could. I'm even gonna make it easy for you. Who wants to be a millionaire style, right? Was it A, Graham Parsons, B, Buster Poindexter, C, a half gallon of vanilla soy milk, or D, Kim Gordon? You want to eliminate two? Maybe phone a friend? You're not the boss of me. So anyway, Andy fucking loves this band, and he wants to borrow this shirt for a show he's going to. So he asks his friend, his new 15-year-old twin brother, if he can borrow it. But thing is, to Paul, these shirts are like his currency of cool, so asking him to borrow one is pretty much like asking to borrow a huge chunk of change. You know, the answer is always no, 100% of the time, no question. So just imagine the shock on little Andrew's face when Pope Paul the Benevolent over here motions to a pile of laundry the shirt's buried in, waves his consent. No. Andy's just stunned. He's humbled by this act of generosity. So he just grabs the shirt, turns and runs out the door before Paul has a chance to change his mind. No. Covered in a hardened glaze of Paul's cum. You're such a piece of shit. That's so fucked. Thank you, thank you. Was he pissed when he got home? He didn't even know, but I got to tell him. 
I got to tell him that he wore my jizz rag all night. He had sweat through it. It was in his pores. I was in his pores. <laughs> it's the best night of my life. Hands down, the best night of my entire life. <laughs> that is so <laughs> fucked up. Like I'm the only person that fucked with him. Josh, do you have anything you want to share with the class? Not at all. You're going to tell him where I am. All right. So this one time I convinced Andy to eat a pile of my puke at a party. No. <laughs> Andy, Paul, and I threw in on this eighth of mushrooms. We were going to eat it before we went to this graduation party at this Chris Perillo's house. And uh, we just we picked him up like two hours before Andy got out of work, so we fucking ate him. Cut to a few hours later, we all meet up at Perillo's house, and it's evident that we're clearly tripping balls. And Andy shows up and he's fucking pissed. Now you gotta understand, this dude never got pissed. Ever. And this night, he's ready to throw hands. So, after like a half an hour of him just yelling and pouting like a crazy person, I tell him, and I have no fucking clue where I pulled this out from, I tell him that I read in High Times that regurgitated mushrooms are three times as powerful. And I agree. Oh man, something about like the stomach acid mixing with the psilocybin. Again, I agree. And I don't know why. Maybe it's just the crazed way I'm saying it. Maybe it's that I got Polly standing behind me nodding like Puff Daddy. We won't stop. But I watched the rage just drip off of his face and turn into hope. We can't stop. And I knew I had him. His eyes open all wide. He looks at me, he goes, are you fucking with me? Oh no. <laughs> oh yes. So then I tell him that I have this deep fear of throwing up, but that I'm willing to hunker down and make with the chum as an act of selfless brotherly love. So he throws up a full gallon of partially digested corn chowder right there on the picnic table. And that night, on the side of a detached, vinyl-sided two-car garage with plywood covering the door, I watched Andy scoop out a handful of vomit and slurp it down his throat. Fuck! Stupid boys! So, you guys must have started throwing punches, right? No, why? He eventually realized he was the only one not tripping, right? Oh, dude. That night Andy tripped harder than anyone in the history of psychedelia. <laughs> I never told him it was bullshit. You guys? No. He went to his grave thinking that shit worked. Oh, God. I never thought of it like that. Oh, I hope he never fucking tried it again. <laughs> like in college, or at a dead show, just walking through the lawn, scooping up piles into plastic bags. And saving it for later. <laughs> this is a stack of grocery bags. I'm terrified he'd get pulled over the whole way home. <laughs> <laughs> oh. How about you? You got any stories about him? You know, I think I'm gonna keep mine between Andy and I for a little while longer. So, um, I wasn't planning on going to the thing tomorrow. Me neither. Oh, thank the fuck Christ. <laughs> it would be so bad. Yeah. Now I'm thinking, I don't know. Yeah. I'll go if you guys want to go. So just to be clear, this whole plan, I'm not talking about it now. Wow, ah, it's fun to be clear. Well, we're here. Mm -hmm. You guys uh, want to head inside or? I could uh, go check out to um, check on Tori. Yeah, thanks, man.
No, that shouldn't bother me, but... Everything's gonna be okay. No. Sure you want to do this? Nope. We have to. He would want us to, you know? Guys. Fuck yeah, dude. I knew you guys would make it. Scoops got totally fucked up during pregame. He's passed out in the boys' locker room or something. It's a shit show. So, did you guys bring Tori along too? Or is it just you guys? Yeah, no. Okay, uh, I'll see you guys inside. Yeah. Okay.